Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam, October, November 2022, paper 41. Let's get started. Question 1. The name of the elements of period 2 in the periodic table are shown. As we can see, period 2 start from lithium till name. Each element may be used once, more than once, or not used at all. Identify the element which is a product of photosynthesis. We know in photosynthesis, plants use water and carbon dioxide to produce oxygen and glucose. So the element produced from photosynthesis is oxygen. Has an oxide produced in, uh, has an oxide found in the clean dry air? It's carbon because carbon dioxide is oxide present in clean dry air. Forms a basic oxide with the formula X2O. Basic oxide means it's a metal oxide because metal oxides are basic oxides. This formula indicates that the oxidation state of X, the metal oxide, is plus one. So it's an element of group one. That's why we will use lithium. Is the main component of fertilizer used to improve crop growth? It's nitrogen. Has the highest rate of diffusion at room temperature so we will check the masses of the gases here present in period 2 the rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the molar mass or the molecular mass of these gases so we will check the lowest mass to have the highest rate of diffusion check the mass of these gases nitrogen is n2 so the mass of nitrogen will be 14 multiplied by 2, it will be 28. Oxygen is O2 because these gases are diatomic gases. So 16 multiplied by 2 is 32. And fluorine is also diatomic gas. So 19 by 2, it will be 38. Nain is the only monoatomic. So it will be 20. The mass of Nain is the lowest mass in these gases. So it will have the highest rate of diffusion. Produce a red flame in the flame test. Lithium gives a red flame. Has only five electrons in each of its atom. So we will go to the periodic table, check the element with five electrons and electronic distribution two, three, it's boron. Has an oxide responsible for acid rain, nitrogen, form nitrogen dioxide, which is also contributes in acid rain. Question two, potassium is in group one element. Name and describe the bonding in potassium. We know potassium in group one and group one is alkali metal. So potassium is a metal. Name the bond in potassium, it's metallic bonding. How to describe the metallic bonding? Describe the structure of in potassium. It's a lattice of regularly arranged positive ions and surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. This light is held by electrostatic forces of attraction between the positive ions and the negative electrons. Potassium combined with sulfur to form an ionic compound, potassium sulfide, K2S, give two physical properties of the ionic compound. We will refer back to the physical properties of ionic compound. We have high melting point and high boiling point due to the uh, strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the positive and negative ion. They are soluble in water and they can conduct electricity when they are molten or in aqueous solution, but of course not when they are solid. Complete the dot and cross diagram to show the electron arrangement and the charge on potassium sulfide ion. In potassium sulfide, potassium has 19 electrons. So the distribution will be 2, 8, 8, 1. It loses this electron, so it will have a positive ion with only 18 electrons, 2, 8, 8. So I have to draw the outer shell electron, only 8 electron with one positive charge. And the formula is K2S, so I have two potassium ions and one sulfide ion. So here I will draw for uh, the two potassium ions an outer shell with eight electron after losing one electron. And for the sulfide ion, I will draw 
eight electrons. Six was in the outer shell of sulfur ion because the electronic distribution of sulfur was two, eight, six, and two gained from potassium. So you can notice that they have the same symbol dot like potassium because they are gained from potassium and the rest of the electrons have crosses that they are the original electrons of sulfur and after gaining two electrons sulfur will have a negative two charge when potassium is added to water it reacts vigorously and a colored flame is seen the equation as shown potassium plus water gives potassium hydroxide and hydrogen gas state the color of the flame we know the flame color for potassium is lilac color. The solution form is potassium hydroxide. It's a strong alkali. So state the formula of the ion responsible for the alkalinity of the solution. We know that the alkali potassium hydroxide have two ions, potassium ion and hydroxide ion. When ionized in water, Hydroxide ion responsible for the alkalinity of the solution and responsible for the high pH of the potassium hydroxide solution. State the color of the litmus in a strong alkali. Of course, the litmus is blue in a strong alkali. Uh, here we have calculations. Calculate the volume in centimeter cube of hydrogen gas formed when 2.34 grams of potassium is added to excess water at room temperature and pressure so here we have 2.34 grams of potassium added to excess water to form potassium hydroxide and hydrogen gas we want to calculate the volume of hydrogen gas so first we will calculate number of moles of potassium number of moles will be the mass divide the molar mass 2.34 grams divide the mass of potassium which is 39 so number of moles of potassium will be 0 0.06 then to know the number of moles of hydrogen gas we have to refer the back to the equation to the ratio between number of moles of potassium and number of moles of hydrogen the ratio is 2 to 1 that means number of moles of potassium is double that of hydrogen gas so we will just divide this by 2 to get number of moles of hydrogen, which will be 0 0.03. To calculate the volume of hydrogen gas, we know that the number of moles of hydrogen, number of moles, equal to the volume divide 24, which is the molar volume of gas at room temperature and pressure. So we, to know the volume, we will multiply number of moles by 24. To get the volume of hydrogen gas so the volume will be 720 centimeter cube aqueous potassium hydroxide react with dilute acid to produce aqueous potassium chloride as we can see here from the equation it's potassium hydroxide alkali react with the acid to produce salt potassium chloride and water name the acid used as we can see from the equation the salt formed is potassium chloride so the acid must be hydrochloric acid state the type of reaction taking place it's an acid alkali reaction so it's a neutralization reaction this is the type of chemical reaction name the experimental technique used when the salt are made by reacting a dilute acid with an aqueous alkali the experimental technique used for the uh, neutralization reaction between acid and alkali is titration so we will put the acid in the purette and the alkali in the flask or the reverse we can use an indicator to know the neutralization point and uh, the, the point at the which the salt and water is formed and the acid neutralize the alkali so the technique is titration when aqueous sulfur nitrate is added to aqueous potassium chloride a precipitate is formed so we have silver nitrate AgNO3 is added to potassium chloride KCl the salt will be formed silver chloride this is insoluble salt so you can see a white precipitate formed 
and of course we will have potassium nitrate which is solid so state the color of the precipitate it's white precipitate as we can see silver chloride is insoluble and form white precipitate name the precipitate form it it's silver chloride write the ionic equation for the reaction including state symbols to write the ionic equation we have to remove spectator ions which didn't take part in the reaction so we have nitrate ions and potassium ions they are the same form and exit from the reaction as aqueous ions but silver ions and chloride ion change to be a solid precipitate so we will get out only silver ion don't forget the charge it's a plus one and the state symbol it was aqueous then the chloride ion with the charge of minus one also the state symbol is aqueous then change into silver chloride which is solid so you have to get the correct formula of the ions and the charges of the ion and of course the correct formula of the precipitate and the third mark will be for the state symbols question three ammonia is made from an industrial process starting with nitrogen and the equation for the reaction is shown nitrogen plus hydrogen to give ammonia gas name the industrial process which made ammonia we all know that ammonia made by hopper process state the raw material from which we can get nitrogen we can obtain nitrogen from air First, we will liquefy air, then we will separate nitrogen by fractional distillation of liquid air. So, we obtain nitrogen from air. State what is meant by this symbol. This two arrow means the reaction is reversible. State the temperature and pressure used in this industrial process. We, know all, we all know the conditions for Hopper process. Temperature 450 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 200 atmosphere name the catalyst used in this reaction it's iron here yeah he tell you already that the forward reaction is exothermic state the effect if any to the position of equilibrium when the following changes are made and you have to explain your answer so if the temperature is reduced the forward reaction is exothermic The forward reaction is exothermic, so decreasing the temperature will favor the forward reaction. The position of the equilibrium move toward the right hand, hand side to the forward reaction because the reaction is exothermic, so decreasing the temperature will shift the position of the equilibrium to the right hand side. Your explanation will be because the reaction is exothermic. If the pressure is reduced, the equilibrium will move to the left hand side so let's check number of moles we have one mole of nitrogen three moles of hydrogen and two moles of ammonia so the left side uh, hand side has four molecules and the right hand side has only two molecules so if we reduce the pressure the equilibrium will move to the left hand side the backward reaction because it has the higher number of gas moles or the higher number of gas molecule as we can see here we have four molecules and on the right only two so decreasing the pressure will favor the side with the higher number of moles explain in terms of particles what happened to the rate of reaction when the temperature is reduced by decreasing temperature the kinetic energy of the particle will decrease so they will move slower this slower movement will cause less collision per unit time and also will have we will have a lower number of particles that have energy equal to or above the activation energy needed for the collision to happen so the rate of reaction will decrease give the formula of the compound formed when sulfuric acid react with ammonia when sulfuric acid react with ammonia a product formed which is ammonium sulfate so ammonia gas react with sulfuric acid the product formed is ammonium 
sulfate and it is the only product formed. Then we'll go to question four. Student prepare calcium nitrate crystal by adding calcium carbonate to dilute nitric acid. Write a chemical equation for this reaction. Here is the formula of calcium carbonate, CaCO3, then nitric acid, HNO3, to form calcium nitrate crystal. Already the formula is given here. Calcium and the nitrate will be multiplied by 2 because calcium has plus 2 charge and nitrate has 1 negative charge. And we will have carbon dioxide and water. Remember, the equation is for two marks, so we have to balance this equation. Two nitrates here, so we multiply by two. And we have two hydrogen, two hydrogen here in water, and already the oxygen is balanced. <clears throat> Describe two observations during this reaction. The first one will be effervescence or fizzing due to the formation of carbon dioxide gas. Number two, the uh, calcium carbonate, which is the solid. We, we can see that the solid dissolves. A student continued to add calcium carbonate until it, it was in excess. The student then removed the excess calcium carbonate by filtration and collect the aqueous calcium nitrate. State the general term given to a solution collected from filtration. By filtration, we separate two parts. The solid part, which will be on the filter paper, is called residue. And the solution collected, which is calcium nitrate here, is called filtrate. The student gently heat the aqueous calcium nitrate until the solution is saturated. Suggest what is meant by the term saturated solution. Saturated solution is a solution that cannot dissolve any more solid at a given temperature. And you have to write this word at a given temperature because the solubility change by changing temperature. Describe how crystals are produced from hot saturated solution just by cooling the solution. The solubility will decrease by cooling, so the crystal will be separated. Calcium nitrate crystals are hydrated, having the formula of calcium nitrate plus X molecules of water, where X is a whole number. The student heat the crystal to remove the molecules of water. State the term that describes calcium nitrate after removing of water. So, after removing of water, we have anhydrous crystals of calcium nitrate, so the term used is anhydrous. A student heat a sample of calcium nitrate hydrated to form 2.46 grams of the anhydrous crystal. The mass formed is 2.46 and we have 0.06 moles of water removed. So we want to calculate the value of X by the following steps. First, we will calculate the MR for calcium nitrate, which will be 40 for calcium, then nitrogen is 14 multiplied by 2, and oxygen is 16 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2, so it will be 16 multiplied by 6, it will be 164. Then we will determine the number of moles of the anhydrous calcium nitrate formed, mass, divide the molar mass, so we have 2.46 grams formed, dividing 164 Number of moles of, of the anhydrous calcium nitrate will be 0 0.015. By referring back to the equation here, we have the ratio between the anhydrous and the hydrated crystal is 1 to 1. So they have the same number of moles. So number of moles of the hydrated crystal is also 0 0.015 moles. Here from the ratio for each calcium nitrate, we have X molecules of water. So for one calcium nitrate, we have X molecule of water. For this number of moles, which is 0 0.015, we have 0 0.06 moles of water. So we will comparing this number of mole contain 0 0.6 moles of water. And we will compare it to the ratio of the formula, which is 1 to x, to calculate the value of x. Here it will be 4. By simple cross-multiplication, we will get the value of x. Nitrate decomposed on heating. Write a chemical equation for the reaction when the solid nitrate is heated. Solid 
sodium nitrate take care of sodium because it has different uh, equation than any other nitrates sodium nitrate by decomposition gives sodium nitrite NaNO2 and oxygen gas again the equation is for two marks so you have to balance the equation here we have two sodium nitrate so we will multiply here by two two sodium nitrite and to balance oxygen oxygen is O2 let's count how many oxygen two multiplied by three is six two multiplied by two is four plus two is six then uh, question five ethene is an alkene which is react with bromine as shown in the equation ethene plus bromine to give dibromoethane write a general formula for alkenes it's cnh2n describe the color change seen when ethene is papilled through an aqueous bromine the color of the original color of the bromine is orange or so when we bubble ethene to form dibromoethane here the color the orange color will disappear and the solution change from orange to colorless this reaction we have only one product is formed from two reactants so the type of this chemical reaction when one only one product is formed it is called addition reaction part of the energy profile diagram of this reaction is shown here we have the reactant ethene plus bromine and this reaction is exothermic you have to complete the energy profile diagram to give first the position of the products here the reaction is exothermic that means the energy is released so the products at lower energy level than the reactant so we have to draw the products here at a lower energy level then you have to show an arrow to show the activation energy labeled as a this hum indicate the activation energy needed for the product for the reactant to react first so we will draw up word arrow labeled a for the activation energy then we want to draw an arrow to show the energy change of the reaction this will be a downward arrow from the reactant to the product and labeled delta h the chemical equation for the reaction can be represented as shown here we have ethene plus bromine showing the bonds here to give dibromoethane and here the list of the bond energy first we want to calculate the energy needed to break the bonds we have four carbon hydrogen bonds one carbon double bond carbon and one bromine bromine these are the bonds needed to be broken so we will multiply the value of ch by four then the double bond then the bond between bromine and bromine the total value for the energy needed to break the bond is 2440. after that we have to calculate the energy released in making new bonds here we have again four carbon hydrogen bonds one carbon carbon and two carbon bromine so we will calculate this value here four carbon hydrogen one carbon carbon single bond and two carbon bromine bonds the value will be 2570 the energy change for the reaction is the energy needed to break the break the bonds minus the energy released when making new bonds so the value will be 2440 minus 2570 the energy change for this reaction is minus 130 kilojoule per mole ester has an, a structure as we can see here this is the ester and he wanted to name of the ester y the part this part is the acid part and this part is the alcohol part so we have one carbon here so this acid is methanoic acid and also one carbon in the alcohol part so this alkyl group is called methyl so the name of the ester will be methyl methanoate deduce the empirical formula of the ester y first we will make calculate the molecular formula we have two carbons 
so it's C2 and four hydrogens, two oxygen. As we can see, the molecular formula will be C2H4O2. The empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of the molecular formula. So we will divide the molecular formula by two and the empirical formula will be CH2O. This is the empirical formula. We have to simplify the molecular formula to give a whole number ratio and this one will be the empirical formula. Complete the dot and cross diagram to show the arrangement of electron in one molecule of this ester. Going back to the formula here, it, this carbon form three single bonds with hydrogen and one single bond with oxygen and this carbon have double bond with oxygen and sim single bond with this oxygen and of course single bond with this hydrogen. So we will we'll draw this here. Each carbon form three single bonds here so it will share one electron with each hydrogen atom and one e electron with this oxygen because it's a single bond here and the other bond for this oxygen will be with the other carbon now don't forget to draw the long pairs of electron for oxygen to complete the outer shell of, of uh, electrons of oxygen to eight electrons then this carbon have double bond with oxygen so it will share two electrons with this oxygen and another single bond with hydrogen and again don't forget to draw the long pair of electrons we have two lone pairs of electron for oxygen. Now, this oxygen also has a complete outer shell of eight electrons. Ester Y can be made by reacting two organic compounds together. Name the compounds and draw their structure. Ester Y with uh, methyl, methanoate. Methanoate comes from methanoic acid. So we will draw methanoic acid. This is an acid, organic acid with one carbon atom. So it will be the carbon atom in the carboxylic group. And this is the structure of methanoic acid. The second part, which is methyl, comes from methanol. So we will draw an alcohol with one carbon and has one hydroxyl group, which is the function group of alcohol. The formula will be CH3, CH3OH. Describe what is meant by the term structural isomer. They are compounds that have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. Name the carboxylic acid, which is a structural isomer for ester Y. Ester Y has the molecular formula of C2H4O2. So we have to name a carboxylic acid which has two carbons, a structural isomer for the ester Y. Here we have ethanoic acid with two carbon one of them will be the carboxylic group and the other carbon will be ch3 so now we have c2 and four hydrogen two oxygen it is the same molecular formula of ester y so it is a structural isomer of ester y having different structure but the same molecular formula here we come to the end of our exam like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive all the updates. Comment down below if you have any question. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.